Shalom, Rakatei Hawa, Rakatei Hawa Shai. As you can see here, it says hard reality set in for Brazil. So down there in Brazil, that situation that was beginning or that had started in Venezuela is now trickling into Brazil. You know, and the people are bugging out down there. Brazilians have never been short of passion. And many are now channeling it towards the country's government after it imposed a controversial austerity plan. The biggest restriction, a cap on public spending that will remain in place for the next 20 years. So it's a hugely um, significant period of time uh, to be imposing such harsh austerity measures. And ultimately, it's always a case of... You know, so as you can see, you know, they, them Brazilians down there, actually, they're catching hell down there, man. And that's how it started, you know, down in Venezuela. You know, you had some of the uh, people, you know, that were protesting, you know, uh, about, you know, the situation that was going on. It, 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 because really, it was economical. It, eco economy ha plays a big part in uh, in um, in a nation's uh, uh, ability. Who's going to be losing out through these measures? Uh, a nation's ability to to uh, to stand firm and to uh, uh, um, maintain as as a, a a country, you know, as a people. So this whole situation, uh, don't be surprised if that same you know cannibalism starts going up into Brazil, you know. And you got to remember these these are uh, countries down in South America, you know when you you know, when you go down to South America, you know, the the, uh, the fruits and vegetables and all that are very plenteous. You know, so for people to be eating each other, that means that they have nothing left. You know, so imagine here in America where you, you have cities where you have nothing that grows on trees. You have nothing to, to uh, be self-sufficient. You can't walk down the street and you're hungry and then, okay, I'm going to pick this couple of fruits so I can, you know, curb my appetite. It's not going to be anything like that. You know, so so America, man, is next. So this is what's happening down there in um, in uh, uh, Brazil. See, so it, you know, it trickles from one con country or one uh, uh, state or one uh, uh, um, city, you know, to another, and that's what's happening down there. This is Second Ezra chapter nine, verse one. He answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before." Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So the most high is visiting this world. See, because it's time, it's the, it's the time of the end. And who's in rulership? The so-called white man. The Lord said that Esau is the end of the world. So these devils which are the Edomites, they're in power now. And this is the time that the most high is visiting, you know, the world that he created. This is the whole reason why the world was created and all the prophecies were spoken of for the times that we're living in right now. It says, Then thou shalt understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes, and you see plenty of earthquakes going on, it says, And uproars of the people in the world. So what that what happened, what's happening down there in Brazil, those are uproars of the people, you know, as you saw. You know, and then you have the so-called Christ of the Andes. How come sweet Jesus ain't helping them people with their, their situation? See? So go, it goes on to say, uh, Therefore, when, thou, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand. See, you shall well understand. That's why at the beginning it said, measure the times diligently. Meaning, whatever the scriptures say, measure it according to what you see going on in the world. And it says, And then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. That's why he told Jeremiah what he told Jeremiah. Uh, let me just get that real quick. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and verse 8. It says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So there's going, you know, and, 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 you know, lack of money means lack of anything. Any work or anything, sanitation and all that. And all that stuff brings about pestilence, brings about plagues, brings about disease. You know, when you have dead people in the road, you don't have anybody to pick them up. So what does that breed? That breeds diseases. You know, those are pestilences. And then these devils are making pestilences 
to destroy the people because they want to bring the population down to uh, uh, under 500 million people, which currently there are over 7 billion people on the planet over that. So there's going to be a, a lot of killing, a lot of death, a lot of destruction. What's going on down there in Brazil, you know, that's, that's you know, these are all uh, uh, of trial runs, you know, because this is the time that the Lord is speeding these things up. Now, once you see this thing come to America, then we know that we're just about there because once you have a crisis like that, the next step is what? Implementing that, that microchip. If you take this microchip, th th that will prevent any of this from happening because the, the information and your money will be already on the chip and you don't have to worry about situations like this. See? So, you know, it's, 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 getting, it's, getting, it's getting real out here, man. It's getting real. And usually it is the people who are worst off in society. President Mikhail Timur said the bill was the first amendment at getting the country out of recession. Unemployment there has nearly doubled to more than 11%. As many as 12 million aren't in work. While the Olympics may have raised spirits, it didn't raise funds. In fact, it cost the nation an estimated $12 billion to host during what were already unstable economic times. It's been left in a and, position... And that's why, like I said, man, that's why the Lord sent his prophets, which we are the prophets, and whether you like it, accept it or not, we are the prophets, and the Lord sent us out here to prophesy. And this is what the Lord said. Uh, this is the book of uh, Jeremiah, the first chapter. I'll start, I'll start the seventh verse. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, say of Yahweh, by Hashem Shai. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. That's what the scriptures say, Take no thought what you shall say, for it shall be given to you in that hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Heavenly Father that speaketh in you. It says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Now remember, you know, we've been speaking this word for a long time. And, you know, you know, nothing, you know, there was a point where there was nothing really happening. But the word was still going out, you know. Because the Lord said this, Isaiah 55 and 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, the bread to the and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth out, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So these words don't go out in vain, you know. Although it seems like nothing's going on, we still prophesying, and the Lord's make you know pushing these things forward. That's why, it, like it says in, in uh, Habakkuk, the second chapter, at the end it shall speak. So these prophecies are speaking right now, and what you see going on there in in uh in in uh, Brazil, we we know we've been telling you that it's going to spread. You know, it was Venezuela, Brazil, and then you have other countries around the world that are going through similar things. You know, but they're just not reporting it in, in the um, mass media because they don't want people to get to get panicky because they're seeing how how these things work out in these different countries so that they can you know they they'll know how to how to better bring it when they bring it here into America. You know, so, yeah, man, I saw that. I said, let me make a quick video, you know, because it's, it's hard reality sets in for Brazil hmm. and there's going to be a hard reality that's going to set in here uh, for America. You know, so with that, you know, I hope your brother's been edified to the next time I say Shalom.